Immigrant Blues' Lee Young Lee recounting events about language and love in his mind where he feels alienated from both of them. Throughout this poem, the author's intent is to sort of continue a motif of the dichotomy between being inside versus outside, and he does this through things like personification of the soul while also using hints of alliteration and a sort of using a repetitive strategy of things like book titles to sort of get at a general theme that he's trying to uh, hint at. In terms of uh, his intentions, he's trying necessarily to show the way that people can be excluded interpersonally through love, but also through a country and th sort of through language. In terms of its impact on me, it makes you sympathize with him in sort of his first story of alienation through language, but it also is relatable in terms of uh, the way that people can be excluded uh, through things like relationships. So to start the poem, the first sort of stanza uh, hints at a recurring motif that uh, is permanent in many of Lee Young Leap's poems about the relationship between father and son, the way that the father is sort of always teaching and instilling particular values uh, within his son. And what he says here is that people have been trying to kill me since I was born. Um, and he's trying to explain why you would learn a second language. So the reason behind this is that since people are sort of always asked after the him, he needs to sort of learn their language, their ways of life, internalize their coach culture, things like code switching to sort of understand the way that they work and understand the way that they speak. Now the next stanza sort of hints at sort of the significance of this idea of it's an old story from the previous century about my uh, father and me is saying that it's something that's been going on. It's been uh, happening to immigrants for a very, very long time about my father and me being sort of <coughs> vague enough so that it could be referencing any immigrant who has sort of a father and themselves in a similar uh, situ situation. We also see alliteration here as it's sort of the same story, uh, same, uh, same story as said uh, multiple times. And that sort of alliteration shows potentially the rep repetition of history. Uh, now, I think that the next stanza where he says the same old story from yesterday morning about me and my son is sort of interesting because it's the same old story from yesterday morning, which is it, it implies that it's sort of ever so permanent in the present and how it affects people in the sort of every day. Then we have sort of a transition into something that's not done in any of his other poems and sort of he gives what appears to be like a book title, things like uh, survival strategies in the melancholy of racial assimilation. He's talking, that's sort of a literal definition of what he's talking about, of how uh, immigrants can survive in uh, the sort of sadness that they have in having to uh, adhere to traditional norms. The uh, psychological paradigms of displaced persons talk about the psych psychic violence uh, that they that they have, and it sort of the internalization of whether it be self hate or the idea that they are inferior is particularly important. And then the sort of child who would rather play than study, who makes it appear as if he has been excluded from the ability to play or have a childhood, which is something that we know from uh, Lee Young Lee's A Hymn to Childhood. But because he doesn't know the language, he's not able to sort of engage in these traditional acts of play, or maybe it is his father instilled values of study. Now, what the book titles do is it's a very important sort of structural issue because it it, it's like he's telling a story. It's like he is giving a, a brief title, but that within that title, there's so much that you can look at, whether it's forced assimilation, psychic violence, or inability to play. Now, the next stanza where it says, practice until you feel the language inside you, sort of the process of acquiring that language and uh, the hope that one might be able to completely assimilate into the other culture. But then he says that he does not know uh, about inside and outside, sort of the ability to shed what you have on the inside and what you have on the outside. Obviously, it's sort of impossible for Lee Young Lee to become completely assimilated. So this sort of inside-outside is the first time we see this motif, and in this instance, it's talking about cultural exclu exclusion. And the next two lines sort of say the... So the fruitfulness of this sort of code switching as it was my fair my father who was spared nothing in spite of the languages he used so he 
failed at sort of protecting himself, even though he had the language, it did not particularly uh, help him. And so, and then he says, and me, confused about flesh and soul, he's sort of questioning the ability for the soul to sort of not cohere to the flesh because it's he's saying that his flesh on this one aspect is Chinese or Indonesian and then to make the soul inside of you be whether it be white or whether it be speaking English is something that uh, confuses him and then he says who asked into a tele who asked into a telephone am I inside of you it's obviously if he's asking into a telephone it's impossible for him to physically be inside of you but he's pressing sort of more of a metaphysical question and I also think the symbol of a telephone is interesting because when you speak into a telephone it could be interpreted as potentially losing your voice you're losing your soul you're losing what you have inside of you and it's being transferred sort of into a device now the sort of transition there's a big tr structurally there's a big transition between the first part and the second part as it's sort of the first part is talking about cultural assimilation and the second part is talking about love and so when the women answers you're always inside of me at peace with the body's finitude the body's finitude its inability to do all its sort of limits and confines that exist within it but it's peace with the soul's disregard this is sort of the personification of the soul its ability to do anything to move beyond limits and what she's saying here is that his love is sort of embedded uh within her and that it will always be in her no matter where she exactly is now the next scene is a scene where she, he is uh sleeping with um uh, 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 he's laying with uh, a woman and he f he asks am i inside you now this sort of has takes on a double meaning because he's asking whether he's physically inside of her but is he's asking whether or not he's actually inside of her in terms of the this, this soul and she sort of responds as if you don't believe you're inside me or not which is sort of talking about the getting to the mutual trust or love that they have and so she she answers sort of talking about how she, they're at peace with the body's greed, which is sort of fulfilling the body's lust for sexual desires, but they're sort of at the same time at peace with the heart's bewilderment. It's sort of confusion about whether or not there is that mutual love that exists uh, between them. Now we have sort of the repetition of it's an ancient story from yesterday evening, and I think that that's sort of interesting because it plays on sort of, sort of the story that exists, but it's saying that it, it continues throughout time, throughout relationships, as everyone feels this. Now, we, again, we have the repetition of the book title sort of telling the story. We have uh, examples, we also have examples of alliteration here, patterns, people, and um, so he's, so the, the patterns of love saying that it sort of persists over generations, or sort of the loss of the home place and the filing of the uh, beloved sort of is, um, the inability to feel at home and uh, inability to have that sort of a sort of beloved one, and then I think that he ends with, uh, "I want to sing, but I don't know any songs." Takes on sort of the ability to tie together two separate things. Sort of it, maybe he doesn't know how to sing the words physically through. Uh, the language, but he also doesn't know sort of the love, so it's sort of the combination of both the love and 